Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Um, another video on functional dyspepsia or about functional dyspepsia because I really, really think there's a dearth, if that's the right word, I think, of online resources about this condition, especially resources delivered in the format of video, videos and from people who actually have this condition so that's why i put these up i do sometimes feel like apologizing saying for those people who are subscribed to my youtube channel not that with my 800 and something subscribers it's a huge base um but uh, i do realize the topics vary a lot uh, it is something that has been on my mind for a while and it's a plan probably sometime towards the end of this year i'm going to be um going going through the long process of figuring out how best to split up my youtube output into different channels that are more logically focused probably one about tech maybe one about fd because uh it is really um something that again it's just it's hard to track down content about this which is just weird because if you look at the estimates estimates as to the prevalence of functional dyspepsia in populations there should be a lot of info about it but for some reason it's just kind of hard so two two different things two different things i want to talk about in this video one i want to talk about my experience so far taking amitriptyline for functional dyspepsia that's gonna be part one I, according to my google calendar i've been on it for eight weeks now second part i want to just talk quickly about what is this uh thing called postprandial distress syndrome or pds if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you know about FD because you've probably found it through a Google search. Um, and that will be it. And just to say as well, I know I've gotten quite a bit of uh, feedback in the form of emails and uh, stuff like that. Stemming from my interview with uh, Professor Nick Talley, which I did, I think, probably six months ago, though time has really flown this year. Um, I'm going to be doing another interview with John Damianos, who is a... Uh, primary care resident in Yale, uh, very active on Twitter, very interested in the gut brain axis and the microbiome and frequently tweets stuff about FD. So he struck me as a logical person to ask to talk about this fascinating thing for us patients about the gut brain axis. So uh, interviewing John later this month, interviewed Nick Talley, and I'm trying my best to find other FD researchers clinicians uh to bring on this youtube channel because um i do know that as an fd patient talking to other fd patients um even these little briefs about what is in the treatment pipeline what's in the drug pipeline what do we know about these uh conditions is helpful so with all that intro aside let me talk a little bit about taking amitriptylin for uh postprandial distress syndrome so this is actually only the second drug. I've had FD, my functional dyspepsia, my journey with this really, really irritating condition because I think that's the best word for it. It's just like, you know, the probably worst, there are for certain worse things to have, worse, dige worse digestive problems, but FD seems to be very much like IBS, a really sticky condition. That's my impression anyway from having talked to a lot of other patients. Once you have it, it seems like you're stuck with it for a long time. So I've had it for almost three years. For me, it all started after my gallbladder surgery. And I'd love to hear from other people with FD who've had a similar experience. I just seem to have woken up from that surgery with a different digestive system. And I'm going to go onto my screen in a second. And we'll just to, I want to talk about a couple of things. But if you have also been diagnosed with postprandial distress syndrome, impaired gastric accommodation. Um, let me describe what it's like for me, uh, this condition. So I woke up, as I said, from surgery. Um, and after the initial phase, which was pain, and uh, I also had like really bad bile reflux, but after that kind of leveled out and I wasn't super distracted by those things, I started noticing that whenever I would drink water, let's say, a cup of water, or um, at a meal, or had some soda, regular things that I wouldn't think twice about, I could feel, this is gonna sound crazy, but if, if you have it, I hope this connects. Well, I, I hope you don't have it, but if you do have it, um, it just felt like it sat in my stomach and I could feel my st bloating. Now, before my surgery, 
I don't think I ever experienced bloating and now there's not a day where I don't have bloating. Sorry if you're uh, if you're one of my friends who somehow got this video and you're like, too much information. Uh, it is usually, but if you have FD, this, we, ha we have to talk about our symptoms uh, to find other people with the same conditions if you're trying to use crowdsourcing to get a bit of relief. So that's what it's like for me. Um, my stomach just sort of blows up with air and bloating and I start burping and this is to me the one facet of it that really convinced me that this is not a this is a real like physiological problem it's like this it's like these weird small burps that I'll eat something or drink something <coughs> and um, this is me simulating but I'll get these like weird burps uh, that just don't relieve it and this can go on for hours. Now, so you're probably thinking this doesn't sound too bad, but imagine every single time you want to have a cup of water from the fridge or uh, drink a glass of milk or eat. And the more you eat, the worse it gets. You get bloated. And so that's what postprandial distress syndrome is. It's after meals. Prandus in Latin means a meal, as far as I remember. And for me, again, talking about my experience of this condition, it's 100 and 10% is 100% meal related. If I don't eat, I can prevent all the uncomfortable bloating and burping and fullness and this strange sensation that you feel food going down inside you and it just sitting there in your stomach around about, if I just uh, step back from the microphone a little bit, around about here. In fact, before I started recording this video, I very cheekily finished off some soda uh, and made myself a sandwich and now I can feel it. I can feel the air in my abdomen and my kind of mid area just kind of puffing me out and i think what what bugs me most about it i it's not painful for me it's just very distracting i would rather not be feeling these sensations which i never did before it started for me so for me it really it really was like an overnight thing and i've heard a lot of people the same so this is what's called postprandial distress syndrome bloating fullness burping and from what i understand in medical terms this is called upper GI symptoms right so you have your colon and your lower uh, GI and you can have painful if you've ever had a bad stomach bug and you got kind of you know IBS like stuff for a few weeks you get this kind of cramping and pain it can be very painful I don't have any of that stuff so FD the F in FD stands for functional and I've heard that the Rome Foundation who are kind of the international body um, who've come up with diagnostic criteria for functional GI disorders are considering changing the name. Don't quote me on that, maybe 100% wrong. It's called functional because if a doctor puts a scope, an endoscope into your stomach, into my stomach, or duodenum, whatever, they're not going to find anything structurally wrong, organically wrong. The pathology is not visible. Now, from what I understand, and the big disclaimer in this video is that I'm not a doctor, I'm just someone living with this, who would rather not be living with it, and I've done, and of course three years is a long time, I've done, I've done my research into this. Um, it's kind of a misnomer because they have found, as uh, I was saying, as Nick Talley was explaining my interview, they have actually found pathology in parts of the, uh, in parts of the in intestine. So functional dyspepsia is a bit of a misnomer, it does not mean it's in your head at all, it just means that it's not a it's 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 uh it's it's, it's the function the functioning of the organs is what's problematic it's not the actual organs as opposed to you know crohn's disease or uh, other forms of bowel disease right so there's two class two different types of fd one is the one i've just described called postprandial distress syndrome and the second one is called epigastric pain syndrome and that is eps in terms of its uh initials now i was going to i was going to talk to you about amitriptyline so this is actually the second drug i've tried for uh pds um the first thing i tried was nothing i hoped it was going to go away to be honest and i actually waited the best part of a year after my surgery i think i mentioned it to a family doctor once and he said yeah it's probably your system adjusting to living without a gallbladder and it'll just kind of go away and that never happened so after about a year i was like okay i'm recovered from the surgery 
I'm used to, I have no gallbladder I can eat stuff but every time I eat stuff I'm getting this very uncomfortable feeling and you know you can live with it for three months but after a year I was like mm, I should probably need to uh, get this seen to so that was the beginning of my diagnostic journey I went to see a very very good I went to see one very unhelpful gastroenterologist who was like that'll be fine and then I found then I, the second one I looked out on I went to a neurogastro if you're also by any chance in Israel I would be happy happy to uh, recommend him privately I don't want to say who he is publicly because that's maybe uh, sharing too much personal info that might be used in a bad way uh, but I'd be happy to recommend him privately he's a neurogastro this is really the stuff he's laser focused on so I began seeing this doctor at a hospital and um, he had me firstly do a test for gastroparesis which they give you a radioactive egg which is fun uh, less fun or I was going to say sounds cooler than it is I was very excited to get to swallow a nuclear egg once in my life it's a great story right um but that came up negative so my gastro it wasn't so that rules out that's how they rule out gastroparesis and usually the symptoms can be so similar that if you don't have gp gastroparesis or gastroparesis however it's pronounced you have fd functional dyspepsia so i said okay well it's fd so let's try sulpirate sulpirate is a actually believe it or not an anti-psychotic medication used by people with schizophrenia and this when i saw the script you know he, he was i was waiting for a taxi so he gave me a prescription i pulled it out of my pocket i'm like hang on schizophrenia this is like for for my stomach like <laughs> am i missing something here and the interesting thing is that for these disorders of the brain gut axis the medications are a lot of the medications are are psychiatric meds used in very low dosages because these problems seem to be related to some kind of nerve signal between the brain and the stomach that for various reasons breaks so the doctor was very good he said look the well actually sorry that was the second second visit so i was skeptical but i took sulpirate and it helped a bit but i went back to the doctor because after three months or whatever the time was and i said look it's helped a bit but not enough like if i'm going to be taking serious medications i want them to like work well like i think it's helped a little bit 20 30 percent so that was sulpiride which um if you're watching this video from the uh us you probably haven't heard about it the reason is it's not approved by the fda i'm based in israel and sometimes israel uses strange drugs for whatever reason because it's got a different approach to medical regulation it's i've also heard of people taking sulpirate in india and russia so maybe those slightly less developed countries tend to use this drug in any event i at some point of this fd journey became pretty depressed to be frank uh this has been going on for two years it wasn't getting better um i couldn't exercise really because i felt so bloated and so i put on weight from the sulpiride because that's one of the side effects of antipsychotics so i was just getting fatter not fitting into my clothes feeling terrible every time i ate and i was like i need some help i'm in a really really at this point i was in a bad place mentally not just physically so i went to see a psychiatrist and i said okay i read about you know these functional gastro disorders i read anxiety and stress can play a role in them I'm really really depressed let's work on the depression so that was when I started taking Lexapro and the psychiatrist I realized I've gone way off topic here so I'm gonna to have to change the name of this video from amitriptyline because that's kind of glossed over that a little bit but we'll I'll get back to it so um yeah I was really depressed and I said the psychiatrist says oh Lexapro will it's gonna fix you it's gonna it's a great drug for depression and i'm confident your stomach issues will resolve with lexapro now something i knew and i was a bit skeptical of after i started was research says the older antidepressants the tricyclics called tcas is their abbreviation work better 
than Lexapro. So did Lexapro help my stomach? Uh, not really. I was still having these problems. So at this point, this took me another six months, which is I think why I'm almost at the three year mark and still finally, finally trying amitriptyline. The psychiatrist did not want to use amitriptyline, period. You wouldn't hear of it. So I had to go back to the gastro. And the gastro, this time after Sulpride said, okay, next thing we're gonna try is amitriptyline in low, again, in low non-psychiatric dosages. So I started taking amitriptyline eight weeks ago. I'm on it for two months now. I'm taking 25 milligrams and I'm still taking the Lexapro. I did a video about that, in fact, about um, taking an SSRI and a tricyclic. Lots of folks like me who are very anxious go on to Google and they read all these things about serotonin syndrome. Now, nothing in this video is medical advice. I'm just a patient, as I've already mentioned. But my doctor told me it was it was fine. A lot of people do it. If you're not using that high dosage of the tricyclic, it's probably very safe. So it actually probably took me a month before I was like, okay, if the doctor says it's okay, I asked the pharmacist. And at that point, you're like, what else can you do? You can ask 10 pharmacists and 10 doctors until someone tells you no. But bottom line, I was told it was safe. And I've been taking this for two months and I've had nothing whatsoever to suggest there may be any kind of a drug interaction, which is what I was worried about, or serotonin syndrome. The amitriptyline at the start makes you exhausted, but I haven't had any weird stuff like tremors or whatever. So um, now, finally, we get to amitriptyline. Has it helped? Again, like sulpuride, I think a little bit maybe in the bloating, but bottom line, as I said, before I sat down to record this video, I uh, had a bit of food because it's 4 p.m. in the afternoon here, and I'm bloating again. So I'm supposed to be giving, I'm supposed to be giving it a four-month trial. I'm going to do that, and uh, if that doesn't help, we'll try the next thing. The other thing I started doing, the other things I've started doing low fat diet i try to eat low fat now as much as possible i've been doing this for about five or six months at this point i don't love it but it's uh, it does help a bit definitely uh but again not enough by itself to get rid of these symptoms and um ox bile is another thing i've been taking sometimes trying it when i go for a very fatty meal it's supposed to if you don't have your gallbladder supposed to help you digest the fats adding in the missing bile again all these things have helped a bit but i'm really looking for something that helps more than that either helps majorly or puts this fully into remission and i can i can go back to i used to drink water in a on a hot day just drink a liter of water and then eat falafel and i never had these feelings if i can go back to that that's my dream to go back to my old body my old digestive symptoms um so there is a very good Facebook group for folks who have functional dyspepsia. I will put a link in the uh, description for this video because there's a few of them, but this one is really, really good. And there's a lot of folks in exactly this boat. Some of them, it started like me after their gallbladder. Some folks after a stomach bug. Some folks after something else. We're trying to figure it out. A bit of crowdsourcing, uh, given that you can wait four or five months between doctor's appo appointments. I don't think it can hurt. Um, just to put this out there, as a non-doctor, just as a patient, I have heard that. Oh, let me let me jump into my screen quickly as well. This is a paper from Tack, who's a really big researcher in this area, and he um, describes a treatment algorithm for functional dyspepsia that again is split into EPS PDS. They say firstly look they look for this H pylori drug. They try to kill that, and then you got prokinetics and all this. Uh, for the EPS side, sorry, for for the PD for the postprandial side, his his algorithm has prokinetics as the first uh, line of option. Uh, acid suppressant agents, and then if that doesn't work, maybe going in for the add-on therapy here. And if that doesn't work, neuromodulators, which are like the reason they use these. Anti these older antidepressants in low dosages 
and no one really seems to understand why specifically it's the older ones why specifically they work it's a co- it's a common topic of conversation among fd patients i've read that it dulls down hypersensitive nerves in the stomach or if the nerves were damaged and you're getting all this unwanted neural feedback that you're feeling all the food go down i don't know i'm not a doctor i'm just trying to figure this out like a lot of people with this uh condition oh yeah the second thing i wanted to show you guys or folks watching this video um something nick tally mentioned when we did our talk was he mentioned that he believes postprandial fd and epigastric fd are actually two separate diseases and i did find this uh paper he wrote uh for the lancet in 2018 if i'm not mistaken yep new insights into functional dyspepsia further evidence for postprandial distress syndrome as a distinct disease so that seems to be the emerging consensus uh and certainly in this in these fd communities the one that i found online the conditions a lot of people are describing with a lot of pain and no bloating sound like completely different problems to what i've been experiencing uh since my surgery um and just finally just a definition just uh, so you don't have just me to go by here's what some somebody said about it um fd is to subdivide into postprandial meal related symptoms such as postprandial fullness and early satiation that's a definition so where does this leave me i'm trying amitriptyline and what's next so something i've heard from this group uh of people is that um those with it seems to me it's beginning to become quite clear that people with the postprandial type have been trying after amitriptyline some people were helped with amitriptyline nortriptyline desimipramine imipramine all these old tricyclics nortriptyline did i mention nortriptyline um and then others have found relief with specific medications for reducing for um increasing your gastric accommodation and the two ones i've heard about that if this doesn't work will be the next things i'll try are buspirone and mirtazapine so those are the two ones and then there's a drug called acotiamide which is making its way through regulatory approval in i believe both the us and in europe it's already used in india and i think in japan so it's one of those weird i wouldn't say it's a weird drug but it's in that kind of in between world of they're already using it in the developing world countries and in the developed world countries it's uh going through regulatory approval i've heard some folks have been able to uh, get it specially authorized even in the us i've no idea if such a thing exists in israel if i could try it if i could find a doctor to prescribe it right now i'm just taking it one step at a time so i'm giving my amitriptyline trial four months if that doesn't work um i'm not gonna i, I will ask about these other drugs i mentioned but uh it's going to be up to the gastroenterologist to decide what to try next so i hope this video if you do also struggle with postprandial distress syndrome pds form of fd trust me i know how much it sucks do it boy do i know how much it sucks it's a, it's a it's an unfortunate one but i'm i i do believe in crowdsourcing uh and i'm hopeful that um it'll get better for me and other people I'm going to share this in the functional dyspepsia group uh so it's hopes 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 of useful to people there if you're in the group and you've recommendations for more folks who you think i should interview who might have insights into this mysterious prevalent condition that we're very very quickly i would say this is my impression medical science is learning more about and as our process continues it seems to be becoming more and more obvious that this is a real physical physical condition somehow related to stuff going going awry in the digestive system we don't yet it seems have ideal therapies but hopefully as uh, medical science progresses as clinical trials progress we're going to be getting better treatment options in the future and i'll leave it there thank you guys for watching uh more videos from me will be coming soon